Okay, we're on page 41 of this section. <clears throat> and we're going to now put everything that we've learned um, uh, to a real-world context. So zoom into question number one here. And when we put things to a real-world context, it's actually not too difficult. We just have to be able to logically think it out. Uh, and the best way to do it is actually just to to kind of write it out first and like a almost like a scaffolding and then apply um apply the math on top of that scaffolding so um what do i mean by that well let's let's write this situation out so a fitness gym charges new customers a one-time fee and a monthly fee of 45 dollars. so there's two things going on there's a one-time fee and then there's a monthly fee of $45. So uh, for a one month membership, the company charges $105. So whoever wrote this problem um, conveniently left out the one-time fee. All they tell us is that after one month, this is how much you pay. So we're gonna have to work a little to figure out um, how, how much the one-time fee is. So um, let's, let's think about this though. In order for us to find uh, out how to do this, um, here is the logic behind it. The total that you're going to pay, right, is going to be the one-time fee plus the monthly fee. That's the basic, um, that's the basic idea behind this problem. If we can figure that out, then, then, then we're, we're good. So we are told that for a one-month membership, the company charges $105. So after one month, right, we, have, we will have paid $105. So that's one thing that we know. We don't know the one-time fee yet. So I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to call it X, the one-time fee. Let's not call it X. Never mind. Let's call that, uh, let's call it the fee. The fee. Uh, and then the, for the monthly fee, we know that, right? We're going to get charged $45 a month. And in this case, we got we got charged for one month, but since that w that the number of months is the thing that's changing, I'm just going to use a variable M just to keep things straight. Okay, so we have this. So it should kind of look something like this. Now, if we take a look at the choices, maybe we should look for something that has 45 times M in it. Uh, the number of months and the only one that it that has that is choice B there so I'm pretty sure that B is going to be uh, the correct answer but let's take a look at A and B just to make sense of why those are not true if we look at choice A it's 100 times M and so um, that doesn't work because if we spend a month there we will have paid a hundred dollars and it, this clearly tells us after one month we pay a hundred and five dollars so that is not the correct choice and if we take a look at choice C right um, they do use a variable T here um, but T really should be the total right and where M is the number of months so you know you could make the argument that C could work as well but B is probably just a better choice because um, the variables just make a little bit more sense in that situation so B is your correct choice Let's take a look at question number two. A photographer charges customers a one-time booking fee and an hourly rate of $50. For a one-hour photo session, the photographer charges $95. So this is very similar to that to question number one. We're going to use the, the, the variables T uh, for the total charge and H for hours of service. So let's go ahead and, and fold that in. I don't think I did that for the first one, but the total is going to be... Um, the number of hours times the hourly rate. So the hourly rate was what? An hourly rate of 50. So 50 times T, right? Uh, and we don't know what the one-time fee is, right? We don't we don't know what that is, the fee. Right? We'll call it that for now. Um, we we are told that for, that, for a one-hour photo session, the total comes out to 95. So 95 is the total. And after that one hour session, uh, so I'm gonna put one instead of T, uh, that'll tell us what the fee is. Okay, 50 times one is 50. Uh, so let me rewrite this, 95 equals 50 plus the fee. Let's figure out what the fee is. So subtract 50 from both sides. So as we do that, we should figure out that $45 is the one-time fee. 
So let's let's fold that all back in there, and we're gonna just plug that in there. So our equation actually ends up. Uh, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I just noticed one thing. I don't know if you noticed uh, the mistake that I made. That t actually should be an h. 50 times the number of hours. Anyway, let's plug that back in. So our equation should be t equals 50 times h plus our one-time fee of 45 dollars. Okay. So there's that situation there. Okay, let's move on to the next page here. Um, okay, so here we are given a context of the Hacienda restaurant offering two dinner specials. The tostada plate costs $10 and the enchilada special costs $12. And they want to sell $600 with the dinner specials. Okay, so that's a lot of work. Um, so... Uh, here is the equation that you come out with. I'll, I'll let you read the explanation there yourself. But $10 is the price of what was uh, the tostada plate. So then X would change depending on the number of tostada plates you, change, uh, you, you, you sell. And it's $10 for each one. And then you have the enchilada plate for $12 each. And all that should total $600. So that's the logic behind um, what's going on there. And then... In order for us to solve this and figure out um, figure out how many of each plate you should sell to reach that six hundred dollar uh, six hundred dollar goal, we want to find the zeros. Okay, so um, we did that in a pre in the previous section, so we're doing that here. Uh, we're going to find the zero for x and then the zero for y. Okay, so. Um, zero for x, zero for y, and then uh, they do all the work for you. So, um, in order for us to reach that $600 limit, we if we sell zero tostada plates, we need to sell 50 enchilada specials. Uh, and the opposite is true. If we want to sell, or sorry, if we want to, if we sell six, uh, zero enchilada plates, we need 60 tostada plates. So we got to figure out um, if we sell 30 tostada plates, how many enchilada plates do we need to sell? Well, the graph helps us figure that out. At 30. We can see that we need 25 enchilada specials uh, in order for us to sell $600 worth of food. So that's what's going on there if you were wondering uh, how that works. So let's move on to some practice problems. Okay, so um, question three is done for you. You can kind of do that on your own if you want. Um, let's jump into question number four. A build your own build your build your own pasta restaurant charges a flat fee of two fifty for pasta and seventy five cents per ingredient. So, um, if we write an equation for this, um, here's the logic behind it. The total, right? I'm gonna keep going with the with the, the variable t. The total is gonna be uh, the the flat fee of two fifty, right? So no matter what, you're gonna get charged two fifty, and then you're gonna be charged. Um, 75 cents for every ingredient. So I'm going to write I for the ingredient. Okay. Uh, how much does it cost for four ingredients? So all we have to do is instead of uh, the ingredients I, we're going to plug in four. Okay. So let's figure out how much that costs. 250 plus 75 cents for each ingredient. We want four ingredients. So what should come out is 250 plus um, 75 cents times 4 should come out to, what is that, $3? I think it's $3. You might want to check my um, my math there. But if you add 3 and 250, you should end up with 550. So the pasta plate is going to cost you $5.50. Uh, question number 5. A carpet installation company charges a customers a flat fee of $75 and $3 per square foot. So the total is going to be uh, the fee plus um, the rate, $3 per square foot. Um, let's put F for foot. How much would it cost to install 100 square feet? So instead of square, uh, instead of F, we're going to put 100. So T equals 75 plus 3 times 100. So let's find how much that costs. 75 plus 300, and that's pretty easy. You can do that in your head, I hope. Uh, 375 or $375 is the total installation cost.